You're watching Steep in the Woods. I'm Josh. I'm Celia. And this is our daughter, Ivy. Here at Steep in the Woods, we are 100% off-grid. We live on a 14-acre mountaintop homestead nestled deep in the Appalachian Mountains of North Carolina. Here on Steep in the Woods, we do totally off-grid on a shoestring budget. You'll see no fancy stuff here. It's just making do with what you have and what you can figure out. If you're new to the project, a big warm welcome. If you're a tough old root, then welcome back. Today is part one of making a post for our wind turbine here on the mountain. We get an awful lot of wind, and with it being summer, negative, with it being winter, uh, we get snow an awful lot here, which involves cloud, cloud cover inherent in that, you know, precipitation. So we need a different source of power other than solar. We were lucky enough to have our Australian sponsor send us one. We would by no means be where we are today if it were not for our amazing members and our amazing Australian sponsor. I'd have probably gave up way before now. And uh, see the way? Awesomeness. Dang wind turbine Maximus here. Let's get to work on step one of installing it. We got this wind turbine a while back and since then I've been keeping my eyes open for the right tree. I needed a tree that was tall and straight and that about 25 feet up I needed it to be around six inches in diameter without the base of it being all that all that big knowing full well that I'm gonna have to lift this into place by myself a lot of the things that we end up doing here are seem kind of backwards or inconvenient. We have to do our projects in, in such a manner as to preserve our strength and our ourselves. In a perfect world, I'd have, I'd have cut down a big oak, got a bunch of people out here and we'd all carry it and it'd be like one of them Amish barn raisins or whatever. But, I, but that ain't the case. It's just me and my wife. And I got to make sure not to, not to hurt myself trying to do something so low that ought to have a bunch of people doing it. So I've been keeping my eyes open for the right tree. And I finally uh, uh, decided on this here tulip poplar. Tulip poplars are well known for growing fast and growing straight. The fast part doesn't really matter, but the straightness is important if you're gonna do you some kind of a big pole here for a wind turbine. Now on the flip side, they're also known for for rotting out pretty, pretty quick. As with everything in life, there's gonna be two sides to the coin. Can't have it all. Like I say, in a perfect world, I'd have picked a an oak or something, but couldn't do that. I had to keep in mind the fact that I had to do it, I might have to do this project by myself. But I think if we're clever, and if we take our time and think about it, we can make this here tulip poplar last as long as any oak would have, and for a fraction of the weight. So the majority of what's in this video is getting around a project that by all accounts ought to have a group of men doing it and making it manageable for one dude. You can see on YouTube these boys up north, you know, lifting these gigantic logs and whatnot. Well, they're all pine. And I ain't speaking against any of them. But pine is for children. If you don't think pine's for children, take a pine log, any given diameter, then take you an oak or a cherry, or by God, a uh, locust. That same diameter, and there's no comparison. Hardwoods are a whole nother game than them pines, them softwoods. 
However, we have one called that tulip poplar. That is still technically a hardwood, but it's really, really light. Most of our projects, I use the true hardwoods. Most of what we got around here is cherry, as far as what's what's straight um, and of a decent size. Cherries tend to maintain their size as they get taller. So the base won't be a foot and a half, while 25 feet up it goes down to, I don't know, six or seven inches. You know, they are relatively smooth and they, uh, they maintain their size in their length. But for this one, since we're going for a 25 foot long pole here, the tulip poplar fits the bill and it fits it perfectly. So what I'm doing is turning this tulip pop poplar that ought to take a couple guys and turning it into something that I can do myself. So step one, you find it. Step two, you cut it down and you cut it to the size that, that you're looking for. And then I decided to go ahead and take the bark off. That's going to happen anyway. Uh, the bark is useless. On anything, on any, if you're going to turn a log into lumber, you need to get that bark out of there. Because it rots quick and most of the time it's going to fall off anyway. So any, anything you do to treat your, your lumber for outs, outside use, um, you want to treat the actual, the actual uh, uh, wood and not the bark. So whereas I would have preferred to take it over some, some ways else and raise it up chest high and done it at my leisure, well, here I am doing it on the side of a dang mountain, uh, removing that bark. Not only does the bark need to go, period, and not only does it have its own weight. I mean, bark has some amount of weight to it. If you remove it, the thing will get lighter. But it also dramatically speeds up the drying time. So trick one, go ahead and remove your bark before you try to move it as to not pull you back out. And then step two is once you got the bark off, go ahead and raise that sucker up, you know, out of the mud. Put it on bits of its own log or what have you. If there's a rock nearby or whatever, just make, just make sure it's raised off of the ground for the entirety of its length. And then just chill out. Just, just just, go do whatever else it was you're planning on doing and come back in a week or so. You don't want to give it so long as to where bugs or rock would, would, would come, in, come into play. For me, that's not a problem. We, we really need this turbine. Um, it's sitting there looking awfully pretty in that box and, and uh, uh, we need to start getting some use out of it. So I won't forget about it, but just just keep in mind that you know a uh, 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 a week, two weeks, even a month, and the thing will just continue to get lighter. But anything past a month, you're you're getting into that territory of of uh, uh, it's starting to degrade on you. So raise the uh, log up and just let it chill out. I think I'm gonna let mine go for about a week, and then it'll be. I mean, you'll, you'll be shocked at, at how much lighter it, it is. I've been looking at making uh, bows here, here lately. It's always been one of my dreams. It's, it's strange to, to have accomplished my first dream, trying to get some property. Well, we've, we've done that now. I mean, you know, here, here we are, you know, on the, on the thing. And it's kind of been a weird situation. I, to some degree, I, I mourn the loss of a of an impossible goal, and it's been strange to come to terms with the fact that now we're here. And what else are you gonna do? So I've always wanted to make self bows. I don't think I'd ever get in, into that back end or composite or any of that any of that jazz. But I've always wanted to make bows. And what I'm uh, getting at is that when you when you make a, a, a bow, you know, you're taking it from the lumber, when you cut that tree down, the very first thing you've got to do is seal up the ends. Because trees will lose moisture really, really quickly. And if you don't get something to seal up the end of that log, it could start cracking in a matter of minutes. So that just goes to show you how much moisture 
and weight can be reduced out of out of something just by letting the water go just by removing the bark or even just by you know cutting it down and letting it chill out there just period so this this is the kind of thing that we uh, get up to here every day and it's uh, it's not really exciting it's amazing you know what what kinds of things will take up your day if you used to call, you know, if somebody was to call you and say, you know, what you, what you been up, you know, what you been doing lately? You say, well, I spent the entire day cutting down a tulip, and then I removed the bark. And they're gonna think, all right, well that, you know, that's interesting. Uh, what else? And you're like, hell no, that and that's the, that was the whole day, dude. It was a 25 foot long, you know, poplar. Especially now in uh, winter, it's getting dark so early that. It's 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 difficult to, to, to feel like you've accomplished a day's worth of task when it gets dark at during four o'clock. But that's uh, what it is. Uh, all of our projects take such a long time that I'm running into video storage problems. You know, whereas this entire day of just stripping the bark off this poplar would have been turned into a thirty second clip in a video called you know DIY whatever wind turbine stump uh, that just that just been boiled down to like 30 30 seconds so it is it is a lot to a lot to wrangle and there is a many many facets to doing something out of nothing when you ain't got the ability just to pay for the deal but I was I was happy with it I mean that part's done. Now I get to, you know, I get to chill out for a week, and then we can test our metal on trying to move this this thing over a little bit closer, and continue on with this with this project. So there you go. That is part one of installing a wind turbine here, Steve in the woods. Took me around three and a half hours to do the whole deal, from winching the thing down after it got hung up in that tree, cutting it to size, and then removing all of this bark topped off finally by raising it up off of the ground. I was lucky that there was this big log here because that did a lot of that raising work for me. Now we're going to come back in a week and hopefully it'll be uh, it'll lose enough moisture and then the weight inherent in that moisture for this dude to be able to pick it up and carry it where it needs to go. If you like what you saw, hit that button. If you're new to the channel, hit that other button. If you want to help support the project, there are links below. Until next time here, Steve in the Woods.